Good morning and welcome to Prestige Auto House. Uh, my name is Tom Dowd and today we are showcasing a Lamborghini Murcielago uh, 2003 model which has just joined our collection and is, uh, we've added to a Diablo that we also have in stock. The Murcielago uh, came out in 2001, ran through production right through to 2010. This is the early model 2003 Australian delivered Murcielago, uh, an amazing car, a collectible. It is a 6.2 litre V12 longitudinal position engine as the, all the Lamborghinis were except for the Mura which was a transversely mounted engine. The Lamborghini is an icon in the supercar market and uh, today these cars are bringing anywhere in price between $600,000 up to $2 million for an SV670 um, which only nine came to the country. So this car is uh, presented in a three layer metallic paint which is called a Rancho Atlas. It's a, it's a iridescent um, orange as you can see, a Rancho. It, come, it used to come in colours like the Giallo, Yellow, Verde Ithaca Green, obviously the classic black, silver, grey, but it's the bright colours that really represent Lamborghini well. The badge on the front is of course a bull. Um, Ferruccio Lamborghini was born under the star sign of Taurus, so that's why he uh, had the bull icon on all his cars and the cars were named after uh, Spanish bulls, Spanish bullfighters. The Murcia Lago was actually named after a Spanish bat, would you believe, because with the rear wings at the back that pop up as air intakes, I'll show you those. The car is very recognisable. I mean, all Lamborghinis are, of course. Uh, they come with the scissor doors, which started on the Countach uh, and went right through to the Diablo Murcielago Aventador and now the replacement for the Aventador is uh, just being released. Um, scissor doors are very recognisable and also if you're in a tight car park spot they're easy to get in and out of the car so this has enormous side pods on the side of the car which is a design feature also which cools the brakes. The air intakes here automatically rise when the car is uh, reaching a certain temperature to allow the engine to cool down. Twin exhausts, of course, uh, 580 brake horsepower. This car travels from 0 to 100 kilometres in about 3.8 seconds and uh, represented one of the quickest cars of its time on the market, uh, equaling times with the Porsche GT2 and uh, other uh, supercars of, of their day. The telephone dial wheels are also uh, very, very recognisable from Lamborghini design. They, Came, go way back to the Araco and some of the early 70s Lamborghinis um, and they still have their design features coming through on the Murcielago and some of the current cars today. So all in all this is a car for the ages so what we might do is have a look at the interior of the Murcielago and give you an idea of what this car looks like on the inside. So when you're looking at the interior of the Murcielago it's very very uh, aviation like it in its uh, look of the uh, speedo, the rev counter, the, the uh, temperature gauges. Um, this particular car has a aftermarket uh, Alpine system um, because it gives you a rear camera and it gives you Bluetooth. Um, the car, the most recognisable feature is a gated gearbox. So this is a six speed gated gearbox that Lamborghini uh, have in all their V12 cars. This was the last of the manual uh, V12 cars built. When we got to the Aventador they were all paddle shift or e-gear as they call it. So this makes this a very collectible car. Lamborghini badge, the interior including the headlining, uh, the dashboard, obviously the seats with the uh, orange stitching is all um, soft Nappa leather and uh, so you, the complete interior of the car is covered in leather. The seat belts come from the inside out which is different to most cars so when you're hopping in the car you have to reach to your left and pull it across, which is fine. Um, and then you've just, you know, start the car up. And that's the alarm. It's time to go for a drive. Let's go. It is, I, I actually just took off in second gear, not first. You can do first or second, but if you want an easy start up, you can take off in second gear. The gearbox is very straightforward, very easy to use because of the gated design. And uh, these gearboxes have been used in Lamborghinis 
since uh, they started production. So it's just the visibility is great. The windscreen's fantastic. It does have, as we talked about earlier, a, a one uh, wiper design, which is interesting. So the ride is uh, comfortable. It's firm as it's an all wheel drive car. Steering is very direct. Uh, and it's not a difficult car to drive. The clutch is easy to operate, it's not too heavy. And uh, it's just a nice experience driving a Murcielago. When you're reversing the car, we have a rear camera on this car as well. Um, but because they are a very wide car, you've always got to keep an eye out on your mirrors as you go backwards into a car park to make sure that you've got plenty of room. Um, some people, some of the technicians at Lamborghini, when they reverse these cars, they actually put the scissor doors up and they sit on the side sill and manoeuvre them that way, which is quite interesting because they can actually see everything. The suspension is, you can alter it here internally, you can have it on comfort, uh, you, can t you can firm it up the dampers. It's, it's comfortable, uh, it's not, we're not driving in a, uh, a limousine, it is a sports car, but for a an all-wheel drive sports car, it is very, very smooth. Uh, some of the roads in Melbourne have got potholes all over them, so you can hear those under the very wide tyres we have on the Lamborghini Murcielago. But overall, it's, it's not an uncomfortable ride. The, uh, the speed and the performance obviously has gone up in the cars with technology, but you know, there's something about these models. They're an analog car, they're not digital, they don't have uh, turbos, it's a naturally aspirated car and uh, Lamborghini stick with that program and yeah a lot of people prefer the earlier generation because it's it feels uh, more authentic and more how the car was designed to be. Look at the base today, it is beautiful. I think we have best of both worlds here, yeah. 91 first release, yeah. manual obviously which they wear, 485 horsepower. Yeah. It's plenty fast enough, yeah, Arthur. It's a 5.7. The Mercer logo, they increased it to 6.2 litre and it became 580 horsepower. See, it just had another leap up. A bit smoother and all-wheel drive. Correct. Whereas the Diablo came in rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive And this is their rear-wheel drive. Yeah, this is rear. So this is a, a purist car. Absolutely. Which for steering and handling is usually better than all-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive cars on a wet, greasy road can be a little bit uh, True. more stable. But, but have a look at the sculptures, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's been sculptured, isn't yeah. it? Especially yeah. at the back, when you come to the back, have it's a look a at it. It's a work of art, isn't it, really? The slim grille at the back with the red Diablo in it yep. stands out. The Mercer Lago, it grew a little bit in dimensions, became a bit rounder, a bit Correct. more enlarged. But the Diablo had a big job because it had to replace the Countach. That's right. Which was the original wedge-shaped scissor door car, which is still a spectacular car today. But these two cars, look, uh, on a day like today, on the foreshore here in Brighton, you couldn't have two better cars. Absolutely. And look at the colour. Mm. Grazia is it, you know? The Diablo came up, they gave it a bit of a slick stretch curvy, curviness. It's mm. a longer car, more flatter. Yeah. And then obviously after that, the Audi influence made them a, bit, a little bit more bubbly. Yeah. You know, they, they gave a bit more puffy. They rounded it off. But they're both very aggressive, but the, a beautiful car to look at. But the Diablo certainly has got a more aggressive look to it. It's right. The Merchelago yes. is a little bit more comfortable to drive and you know, perhaps a little bit faster, but they're both from different eras, you know, the 90s and then the Absolutely. 2000s. Absolutely. And beautiful, iconic cars, especially manuals, mm. you know, gated manual. It's a yep. quite desirable, unique. Well, they don't build them anymore. And the Merchelago was the last Lamborghini to have a, a manual gearbox. So. That's right. And obviously, at that caliber, and before that, they had uh, no. After that, they had the uh, Gallardos, right? Yeah. Which were some came manual, but Aventadors yeah. were all. Uh, yeah. Aventadors all were uh, in the uh, e-gear. E-gear. The Gallardos, uh, all you, know, you could buy them up to 2010 or Balboni in manuals, the same as these. But after that, no more manuals. So. Mm, I loved it there. So the next question is Arthur, is what are we going to have for lunch? I'm getting we're lunch. Uh, we're having Japanese lunch we're today. We're having uh, miso and some Yes, sushi. you in Japanese? Yeah. Jeremy? Yeah, good. We'll get some sushi rolls. We'll get miso soup. Perfect. What and a magnificent then, uh, day to have these two supercars beautiful. down the beach. I'm being honest. You've got to marinate the stuff, you know. You have to give a bit of yeah, seasoning, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. Let it let it. What are we brew. talking about now? We're a talking about <laughs> <laughs>